You ready for bed? Huh? All right, sit yourself. You can finish unpacking. Brad Anderson, the director of Blood, is such an interesting director to me. Mostly, I'm a pretty big fan of his. He's been around for a long time now, although he seems to have made the switch to television a while back and works mostly in that space. But he's like the master of the B-movie. Now, not B-movie in, in like a low-budget, cheesy sense, but movies that are just good but just shy of great. For whatever reason, all of his movies are plagued by this. Although, I mean, they're rarely bad as well, so that's something. The only exception I would have is my favorite movie from him, which is also one of my favorite horror movies of all time, which is Session 9. The Machinist comes pretty close, but as great as Christian Bale's performance is in that, I always thought that movie lacked something from being really great. And this movie does not buck this trend. Blood is a 2023 movie about a woman whose son gets inflicted with a strange disease that requires him to drink blood in order to survive and the lengths that she'll do to save him. Now, this movie centers around Jess, a hospital nurse who's going through a divorce from Patrick and as a result has to move into her old family home with her two kids until she finds something more permanent. This, of course, fits very neatly into the overused horror trope of moving into a new house. Now that is right up there with the bathroom mirror jump scare. That is something that I really think needs to be retired for a bit. Anyway, Jess is trying to navigate through this messy divorce in this new home when Tyler and Owen go down to the lake to do some fishing. What they find instead though is a mud pit with an old dead tree in the center of it. Their dog Pippin is not a fan. Now, right out of the gate, there is some tension in the family because Jess is a former pill abuser, which led to the divorce in the first place, and Patrick having an affair with the nanny, who now lives with him in Jess's old house. There are moments in this movie that I wonder if things kind of got moved around or changed in the editing room or during post-production in general, because there are some little things here that don't quite connect the way I think they should. I mean, for instance... Patrick now has a new child with the nanny and lives in Patrick and Jess's old house, which he currently has while they are still going through their divorce. But Jess is just now moving into her old family home, saying that she has no other choice. But where was she living before? I mean, if the, if the dad has a new baby, that baby is, I mean, I don't know what baby's ages are, but this baby is at least between 1 and 12 months old. So I'm assuming Patrick and the nanny were together for at least two years. I mean, one year of the pregnancy and then one after the baby was born. Presumably Jess wasn't living with them during that. So, so where was she? This is, I think, one of the biggest problems in this movie in general. There are some details that are overly vague and some that are real specific. And I don't think the movie always makes the right choices on which to show. Anyway, one night Pippin runs back out to the tree and does not return for a couple days. Uh, when he does return, though, he is feral and then attacks Owen. Owen then has a series of strange reactions that the doctors are having a problem pinning down. Now, this sets up some of the strengths of the movie. Now, I really like the almost procedural way that Jess kind of figures out about his need for blood. It's like a it's a nice added measure that she is a nurse as well. So you can really kind of see how she's battling with her rational side of what she knows to be right, but then seeing what is actually working for her son. And her descent into this kind of darker area of doing things in order to save her son was handled really well and believable, I thought. Eventually, though, she realizes that she can't keep him in the hospital anymore and she has to kind of bring him home in order to care for him. And at first she's able to kind of steal the blood at work, but then as that gets harder and harder to hide, she has to find alternative ways to feed her son, from animals to eventually giving him her own blood, which of course puts added stress and pressure on her own life as well as her health. It's kind of a fascinating and compelling aspect of this film. Like, how far would you go to save your child and like how much of yourself would you give up? I think that is the strongest element 
of the film. Unfortunately, things escalate to a point where Owen is clearly getting hungrier and hungrier and he is beginning to change into something. So a desperate Jess has to make bolder choices in order to keep her son healthy, especially one involving a former patient who was recently diagnosed with terminal cancer. So getting back to some of the stronger elements of the film, what I did really like about this movie in general is it's kind of grounded and somewhat raw approach to the material. I mean, okay, this movie is not about vampires. If you go into this movie thinking it's about a vampire story, you'll be disappointed. It's about dealing with the reality of vampirism. And that may seem like a splitting hairs kind of thing, but it really is a difference. And yes, there is a supernatural element here that kind of makes you think of vampires, but it's a much more subtle application of the idea. And I appreciate this take on the burden it places on the family. The overall pragmatic approach to doing what needs to be done, to the rawness of the arguments of the parents fighting in the mediation meeting, to the fairly dark resolution. It just all felt very grounded. I will say the explanation in general just kind of didn't work. Here's the problem, and, and, and I get it. People always want stuff like this explained. And, and I think you have to pick what to do. Either you don't explain it at all, or you have an explanation that makes sense. And this kind of plays it halfway, where it gives a little bit of an explanation, but it's so brief that it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I gotta get into some really brief spoilers ahead here. So skip ahead if you don't wanna hear this. Apparently, it's something living inside this tree in the middle of this bog that is evil and turned the dog and then subsequently the boy into this thing. But that tree was on her family property for years and they kept showing pictures of her family kind of going out to this tree on the lake. So it felt like there was more of a potentially tragic backstory there that they just never really got into. Almost like at some point the plan was to open the story up a bit and get into this history of the tree and the family, but it just never comes. And so my question is, how did their family live in this house without running into any of this before? Or did they? Like, it looks like someone tried to burn the tree down prior to this, but she has no insight on any of this from her past. So my point being, it, it just makes more questions than it actually answers. Overall, the story was a really interesting take on the idea of vampirism, and it is a well-done film. Admittedly, the pacing does suffer a bit at times, and it, it feels like instead of the backstory stuff, they leaned in on the family stuff, which I do think could have used a bit of a trim. I mean, there are, there are sections in the movie where it feels a little repetitive without moving the story along as they're continuing to try and find more and more blood. It's a good idea, but given the scope of the film, I would have liked to have kind of moved some of that stuff along a little bit. Michelle Monaghan is excellent, as usual. I really loved how much of a flawed character she was, and she rode that line of being both desperate and strong-willed simultaneously as she does so well. Uh, I did not like Skeet Ulrich as Patrick, though. I don't know if I've seen him in much since Scream, to be perfectly honest, and so I couldn't tell if he's just like a bad actor or just his character was directed in this certain way, but I did not like him in this. I thought he was sort of all over the map. The other thing I didn't like is the almost exclusively handheld style of shooting for this movie. Almost every shot is handheld. And for me, I think horror works best in either locked off or gentle move shots. A handheld, I just don't think works as well for this type of subject matter where you really want to sort of build up this tension inside of a horror film. It's good for certain moments, like when there's action-y things, but I mean, 85% of this movie is handheld, and I, I think that's just too much. But aside from that, the movie looks good and has some really nice visuals. It's a solid but slightly flawed film of a really interesting take on a story or genre. In other words, a classic Brad Anderson movie. <laughs> I'd give this movie a B, but let me know what you think.